In this sequence of videos, I'm documenting my project to design and build gear for a dinghy camp cruising. But first, I need to actually build the dinghy. The dinghy I selected for this project was designed by Francois Vivier. It's a 14-foot Aber design. The plan specified lots of different wood to use for the keel timber, but since we live in Oregon and one of the wood options was dug fir, that seemed like the obvious choice. We got a piece of dug fir that was the correct length, milled it down to the right thickness, and then cut it to the correct width, which is the widest part of the boat around section six. You can see how it fits into the notch of the mold right there. Here I'm marking the center line down the entire length of the keel. And once that's done, I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Once the keel's in the right spot, I clamped it down to the mold and got it as snug as possible so that I could measure the section lines accurately onto the keel timber. I gave a little discussion of where to measure the sections from in my previous video. I'll put a little link up there. So here the keel is right up against the mold and I can mark off where the sections are. Because the width of the keel changes along the length of the boat, it's really important to have the sections marked out well so that the width of the keel can be taken off of the mold and marked at the right section. Then a curve can be drawn. I drew the curve by getting a long batten and tracing along it. Once the curve defining the width of the keel was drawn carefully along both sides, it's time to trim it down to the line. Occasionally you can see me here checking to see if the, the cut is square, and if it's not, I just go back and adjust the angle of the planer along the edge. It's kind of inconvenient to move long boards like this around to various tools, so um, we tried a couple different methods of trimming down to the line. I think that the power planer finishing up with a hand plane seemed to work the best. But it definitely made the most mess until we figured out how to collect the sawdust. Rob's my helper for this project, and he definitely deserves a lot of credit for being the most valuable team member. Here Rob's trying to take off a bit of wood with the handheld jigsaw. We thought that might be a quicker way to go, but it seemed almost more difficult.
Okay, let's give this thing a test fit. And then there should be station marks in the middle, since it's five, so it's going to stay right. Let's see how we do. This end might need a little bit more shade out. Yeah, those adjustments did the trick. It's fitting a lot better now. Before I laminate the transom together, I just want to make sure that the width is correct and it'll fit into the notch here as well. So here's the test fit of the keel. The clamps and the lashing at the end bend the keel and hold it in place. Now that the keel's ready, it's time to get the transom knee and the stem laminated up. Rob's tracing the templates of the stem and the transom knee onto the planks and arranging them so that the grain will be running along the length of each piece as much as possible. The end result should be a sandwich of lamination that has no short grain. The lamination for the transom knee will be two layers of dug fur, and the lamination for the stem will be three layers. <music> to avoid the lamination sliding around while we were gluing it and clamping it, I just put some screw holes outside of the actual pattern, and that allowed us to be able to screw it in position and make sure that the registration was correct. The pieces are clean of sawdust and so it's okay to start putting a coat of unthickened epoxy on to make sure the lamination doesn't start out dry. Once all the pieces were thoroughly coated with unthickened epoxy, it was time to mix in the thickener and coat everything with that. Epoxy doesn't require a lot of clamping pressure, but it'll definitely slide around. So it's really important to make sure your alignment's right and that once you clamp it, things aren't going to move. This clamping setup looks a little nutty, but it got the job done. Since that worked, it's time to start laminating some other pieces.
These are the two halves of the center board, and I decided to laminate them together first as sort of a test to see how it would be to laminate the transom together. These are the Doug Fir lamination layers for the stem. Unfortunately, a lot of this footage is poorly positioned off camera, but it's a three layer lamination similar to the transom knee, the way it goes together. Next up is laminating the transom. The way that the two pieces go together is staggered so that the top edge of the back of the boat will line up and the bottom edge will be sort of a stair step which allows for the bevel in the way that the curvature of the planks come in and meet the transom. Also, it's really important to make sure that the sculling notch turns out on the intended side of the boat. My preference is for the sculling notch to wind up on the starboard side of the boat. In order to make sure this happens, it definitely takes a little bit of brain gymnastics and careful planning because the lamination order, which one's on top, the smaller one or the bigger one, will affect which way the bevel turns out, which will affect how this thing sits on the construction mold. And of course, I also needed to take into account the fact that the construction mold was upside down. So the starboard side is actually on the left. Like with the transom knee, I want to make sure that this doesn't slide around once it gets laminated together. So I am drilling in two screw holes and that should keep it registered correctly. Here's what it looks like after the epoxy had set, and you can see how the stair step allows for the bevel of the transom at the bottom.
One thing that I realized is because the thickness of the marine plywood dictates the angle in, at which the planks should meet the transom, that because my plywood was one millimeter thinner than that which was specified in the plans, just because what was available when I ordered the pieces, um, I had to make sure that the angle is the angle that would have been the angle if the plywood was one millimeter thicker. So here's the almost complete bevel along the bottom of the transom, and it's just going to take a little bit more work for me to finish it up with a hand chisel to get into some of those tight little spots that I couldn't use the block plane on. But it's turning out pretty well, and I think it's almost ready to put on the boat. As I mentioned in the previous video, all of the footage of me building the boat was shot prior to the COVID-19 outbreak. So now that I can't actually build the boat, I'm taking the time to edit together all the videos of my process. And I hope to get the next video out as soon as I can. Until then, take care.